Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This free agency period is bringing life to us all, and you do not want to miss this episode because I don't know if you heard, but DeAndre Hopkins is an Arizona Cardinal. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. I am your host with the most, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright, joined by my best friend. Woo! My best friend, and he's a little bit excited. We'll we'll get into that, but Jason Moore, how are you holding up? I am fantastic. This is a a weird world, a weird time, and I'm doing great. It is a weird, weird world we are living in. Uh, the NFL, though, they came through this morning with a whole bunch of news. Felt like a little bit of normalcy was was brought back. A little joy, and, a little excitement. I mean, it, it, as temporary as it will be, because we hope that everyone out there is staying safe. We are hope we hope you are social distancing. Take care of yourself. Take care. Of, take care of your brethren. We are all in this together, and we're going to make it out. So we are here because we are hoping that we can bring some some of that NFL joy to you. Where we are committed to keeping the podcast going, the content will be going, whether we are in the studio, whether we are at home. And a quick note from our fearless leader, Andy Holloway. It's if you saw, if you're following us on social media, Andy has been sick for a while. No, he does not have the corona he has some other virus that's going on but it has really knocked him out and And it's it's not a fun time to deal with anything right now so we we've talked about it i mean and he made the decision as well that he will be self-quarantining at home because i mean he's got to protect himself and his family so we're hoping that we can get him back on the show as soon as possible we'll see because when i mean you heard him you heard him try and do the intro last week, and it was, <laughs> it was a colossal failure. Yeah, it was not good. Uh, we got on a Google Hangout today, and it was not good. Yeah, he he sounds he sounds too poor to be on an audio only, uh, and and looks too poor to be on the video. Very side disheveled on, on YouTube. So for your sake and for ours, he is not participating today. But he does send his sincere yes. Thanks to all the Foot Clan that have reached out, who have showed support, who are understanding. It brings him joy, and he he wanted to make sure that we relate how grateful he is for uh, all the love he's received. And he is recovering. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's on the medicine. He's on the mend. Well, he got some real good medicine today. He did get some good medicine, and so we we will just start right with that because everybody wants to know. How are the fantasy footballers doing with the news of the big trait? We're doing pretty well, And Mike. let me tell you this. We're doing freaking awesome, man. Oh, let's <laughs> pop some champagne. <laughs> oh, Jason is attempting his best to actually... <laughs> I didn't hit you, Mike. Oh. If you want to join this party, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. But look, here's the deal. The Cardinals have acquired DeAndre Hopkins. What did it cost, Mike? <laughs> Nothing, Jason. <laughs> right. A little cheer. <laughs> Clink. Oh, bottoms up. Mm, yes. It's party time, America. <laughs> so, look, Arizona Cardinal fans, we are, we're delighted. But okay, so let's let's actually break down what happened. Yeah, so maybe, maybe people don't know. So the morning started very strangely for Arizona. Pinky's up for Jason Moore mm-hmm. uh, with Kenyon Drake receiving the transition tag. And what we have been talking about, I mean, the entire off season is they clear they want Kenyon Drake back. He fit the system unbelievably well at the end of the year. We all got a glimpse. We got a little tasty treat of what could happen with Kenyon Drake as the primary running back. But they have David Johnson, who unfortunately it looked like he did not fit the scheme. 
but he had a monster contract. Yeah, he's that, paid a lot. He had a monster contract that nobody in the NFL would possibly trade for David Johnson. Well, that's not true. There were rumors that we would trade David Johnson along with a pick. Right. If we traded maybe a, a we, third round pick and David Johnson, someone would take that contract. They call that the Osweiler. Right. So if the morning starts, Kenyon Drake has been transition tagged. Essentially, Arizona is trying to give him $10 million to play for this year. Then the news came out that, holy crap, the Houston Texans are trading for David Johnson. And while I feel bad for David Johnson and his family to have to move and uproot and all of that, it is phenomenal for the ins and outs, the business and the fantasy for the Arizona Cardinals, of which we are fans. Yes. Maybe that was lost here, is that we are Arizona Cardinals fans. And um, and so, yeah, I couldn't believe that we were able – we weren't sure what we had to trade. Yeah, what were the details? And then the details start slowly leaking out, and it's – Schefter reporting the Houston Texans are going to pay all of David Johnson's salary. Not, Yeah, I thought we were going to cover half of it at least. No, they're going to take the whole salary. So now it's just a matter of, well, what did we have to give up Yes, to get David Johnson off, uh, and, hit, and that contract off the roster? And then I think it was about 10 to 15 minutes later. Became an Arizona Cardinal. All we gave up was a second round pick for him, baby. That's what Muhammad Sanu got. Woo! That's what Hayden Woo! Hurst got. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we got DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, uh, okay. And, and let me just let's say be, this. Let's be professional yes, about this, Because Jason. here's the here's the reality. We will be unbiased with our analysis. We will not be unbiased with our uh, cheer. Uh, wow! Because we're having a good time over here at the Fantasy Footballers. The Arizona Cardinals just got DeAndre Hopkins for basically nothing. And Woo! we got rid of David Johnson's contract situation. Oh, man. So our hearts this, and prayers go I'm starting out to get sweaty. To the Texans fans. Yes. I kept saying on our, on our Google chat, I was like, I just can't imagine what it feels like to be on the other side. Because I'm yeah. feeling, I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah, as good but as we feel. That sucks, man. I mean, you, you yes. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's hard to possibly put yourself in that mindset. So, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so that's like that was the big news of the day so far. I mean, the the day is still young. News has been crashing on us at a breakneck speed. We're gonna try and cover at least. Uh, we're, at least with the stuff that we know about. Yeah, look. Because we can't cover the stuff we don't know about yet. We it hasn't happened. But I will say this. We know about all of the stuff. So <laughs> we will cover everything today. And if for some reason there is something that happened, um, you know, early Tuesday, maybe uh, uh, late Monday. Right. Then we will cover it on Twitter and on our next episode and on our footcast at jointhefoot.com and everywhere. Because it's what we do. What's wild is the big news of today's show was supposed to be about the CBA. Oh, I the, know. The players' union and the owners, they agreed to a new contract. The NFL, we are secured for the we are secured until 2030. Like that was gonna be the big news. So on today's show, like Jason said, we're gonna break down all of the the movers and the shakers of this free agent period. And, and it's not just free agents. I mean, we're seeing trades happen like crazy. So we're going to break that down. If we have some time, we'll dive into the CBA, give our reaction to what's going on, some possible fantasy implications. Education on what the deal means for right. fantasy, for your leagues, and, and for the NFL and, and players as well. A couple housekeeping notes. We got a giveaway going on. It's completely free to enter. Go to footclangiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed Keenan Allen jersey. If you want to watch you want to join in this joyous celebration that Jason and I are engaging in. And I might add, like, it's so hyped in this office that Jay Grizz, oh. Jay Grizz is a Cardinals fan right now. It's, it's He's legit. loving life. <laughs> he is loving it. So YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can follow us on social media, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, or follow Jason at Jason FFL. I am at FF Hitman, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Jason, let's get into some buy or sell. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. We, of course, had to talk about fantasy implications. DeAndre Hopkins, he comes to Arizona. Oh, yes, yeah! yeah! Uh, so he's he's in Arizona, right? Kyler Murray will now be the one throwing him the ball. Kyler Murray, buy or sell, top five fantasy quarterback in twenty twenty. This hype train is about to hit turbo thrusters. Are you going to be on board? Or are you going to be waving goodbye as? As we ride off into the sunset, well, it, it's it's it, it so to be serious, it is always difficult to give advice on the Arizona Cardinals as fans. You know, people worry: are we biased? Are we unbiased? We are always trying to be as unbiased as possible, despite our excitement. Um, but you know, the the reality is, you know, we weren't big fans of of David Johnson last year. You know, and and coming into this season. If this trade did not happen, I think you could have had a buy or sell with Kyler Murray as a top five guy, and it would have been a legitimate question. In his rookie right. season, he was the quarterback eight. He's in a fast-paced offense that wants to score points. It was terrible in red zone percentage turning into touchdowns. So he was moving the ball through the 20s, but as a rookie, could not get the passing touchdowns uh, you know, at, in, at, in four point scoring, he was about twenty points away from being the QB five. So he was really on pace to be there. Weeks one through eleven, he in fact was the quarterback five. Hit some kind of a rookie wall those last four to five weeks. Well, part and, of that, part of that rookie wall, the last four to five weeks, he actually played phenomenally. No touchdowns were coming, and that that was the same time that Kenyon Drake right was scoring touchdowns left, right, and center. So they'd get down there. The offense as a whole for the Cardinals was actually getting better, but Kyler Murray's fantasy production fell. Without Hopkins coming to the team, an argument could have been made that he should be in that top five. Now with Hopkins there, I think top five is, as far as preseason rankings, pretty much a virtual guarantee for almost everybody. I'm very much buying this. One of the guys I would have above Kyler Murray in that top five, which would make it kind of questionable. Because we get so Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, they're locked in. We're we're not joining the hype train so far that we're saying Kyler is outscoring those two. No, guys. he's not in that tier even. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even put him there. Even if he takes a, a leap in year two, I don't think he'll leap to where the peaks of those two players are. But Deshaun Watson is a guy that I would have definitely had over Kyler Murray two days ago. But now you take one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League, in fantasy football, away from Deshaun Watson and give him to Kyler Murray, that doesn't not mean anything. When you get in the red zone now, does it all have to be Kenyon Drake or can you throw it up to a 50-50 ball with you know one of the top two wide receivers in, in the NFL? So I very much buy he's going to be top five. It's kind of sad, though. Because that means he will be drafted as such. And oh, that does this not, is happening. That means I will not own Kyler Murray. Right. Because he will now be in those top five or six rounds where I don't draft quarterbacks. He won't return on that value, even if he finishes as a top five. I want a guy like Dak Prescott this last year who finished number two, who you got in the double-digit rounds. And, and that's another thing. If you're talking about is he top five, you look at, well, who are the competition? Obviously, you talk about the two that's in. Mm-hmm. But then look at last year's guys. From there, it was Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson could do it, but limited work. Jameis Winston, he doesn't even have a team. Uh, Deshaun Watson lost Hopkins. So, it, you know, right now it seems like really the question is, is Kyler Murray the third guy? And that one Oof. is that one is much more difficult Man. to answer because he still hasn't done it. And you're going to get shades and worries of the Baker Mayfield jump. Right. Baker Mayfield showed great things his rookie season. He gets Odell Beckham, and all of a sudden, he was the number five quarterback in the fantasy season. I was not buying it, um, but that was, uh, you know, he was listed as one of our bus candidates in the ultimate draft kit, but he was hyped. And so you got to be careful because obviously it didn't work out there. It might not work out here, but I do believe it will I because would, the running game. Sure. Of Kyler. I, and I will say this there is a very big difference in. The in the Baker situation and the Kyler situation, the Cleveland Browns acquired Odell Beckham 
by trading away a very good lineman. And we you saw what happened to Cleveland. Like their offensive line play really suffered because of it. The Arizona Cardinals bring in DeAndre Hopkins. They traded away a running back that didn't fit the system. And now they have a top 10 pick that they they don't have to feel pressured into drafting Jerry Judy or CeeDee Lamb. A I, lot of people are assuming that this means they will take an offensive lineman. And, and I think if that's Isaiah what Simmons I assume, isn't there, they're going to bolster the O-line. That's what I would assume. So, I mean, this is, a, this is a move that improved the Cardinals in more than one dimension. It wasn't just, we lost a piece, but hey, we have a superstar wide receiver now. It's the entire team can get better. With a mobile quarterback in Kyler and Kenyon Drake, which we saw the very end of the season, how electric he was in this system. Larry Fitzgerald's still there. Christian Kirk's still there. And Hopkins, this is going to be a very high-scoring offense, or at least it should be. How do you feel about the dynasty outlook for last year's second-round pick, Andy Isabella? No, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great, Bob. Um, no, I mean, the the what he has to overcome – I was a big uh, Isabella believer. I was uh, that both in pre-draft and post-draft. Uh, Hakeem Butler, more so pre-draft. These two guys, they showed a lot. They were drafted in in perfect systems, but now why? I mean, you don't need them. If you're the Cardinals, you have your key pieces. You're going after victories. You're not just trying to give you know throw the dogs a bone here. You're wanting to win and not just develop young players. Andy Isabella and Hakeem Butler will have to do a lot to you know break their way into relevance on this offense. So you are we're putting you down you are a buy for Kyler Murray top 5? Yes. Did you know that Arizona traded for DeAndre Hopkins? Oh! <laughs> yes! it, 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 you know I'm buying it. Come on. I remember when <laughs> they did it it was yesterday. <laughs> Oh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. You know what else is going to be fun? What's that? Breaking down all the free agency news across the National Football League. That was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Sign up. Use our registration code BALLERS, and you're going to get a $10 credit for your first purchase, like the beautiful DeAndre Hopkins jersey. It's on the wall. It's going to need to be updated. But when it's there, it'll be at PristineAuction.com. We want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe with Home Security. There's two ways you can go about protecting your home. The traditional way, you wait weeks for a tech. They do a messy installation. It costs a small fortune. Or you can go with our friends at Simply Safe. Simply Safe is everything you need in a home security system. Award winning protection, two time winner of CNET Editor's Choice Award. Simply Safe blankets your whole home in safety. You barely notice it's, that it's there. It's remarkable. You can set the system up by yourself. Anyone can do it. We're talking about 30 minutes to an hour, and you're the one setting up your security system, and you're not trading off for safety. You have an army of highly trained security experts ready to dispatch police to your home at a moment's notice 24 7. We protect our studio. With Simply Safe, and right now, check it out today. SimplySafe.com slash footballers. Get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial at S I M P L I S A F E dot com slash footballers. SimplySafe.com slash footballers. And we want to thank HelloFresh. I am a big, Hello. big fan of HelloFresh. I'm a big fan of food. I'm a bigger fan of delicious, you love fresh. Fr yeah, you love food. fresh food. So, I mean, come on. You can get mouth-watering seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Look, I'm making a lot of meals at home right now. We're we doing all are. A lot of home cooking. You might as well get in on HelloFresh. They cut out stressful meal planning and prepping so you can actually enjoy cooking and, and cook together with your family. Get dinner on the table in just 30 minutes, even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options. There is something for everyone. Low calorie, vegetarian, family friendly recipes. They've got more five star recipes than any other meal kit. So you're going to get something delicious that you can finally break out of your dinner rut or, you know, the canned beans every night. No, huh? Mm, not mm. with HelloFresh. You're going to have awesome meals. Personally, 
I have loved this. We, I used to cook with my wife. We'd call it love dinners, make this meal. My son has taken to cooking. He loves making it. He made an entire meal and did the whole French fries, everything. It was awesome. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers10 and use the code footballers10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash footballers10 and code footballers10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Free agent frenzy. Let's talk about other things that have happened, not just things with the Arizona Cardinals as exciting as those things are. The Tennessee Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill mm -hmm. has, just as we all knew, secured the bag four year, $118 million, $62 million is guaranteed. Both his 2020 and 2021 salaries are fully guaranteed. Congratulations, Tennessee. You have your quarterback of the future. Let's hope that he is, in fact, the guy that we saw during the second half of the uh, of the of uh, the season. I mean, we've seen shades of it before, like where Ryan Tannehill looked like he was an uh, up and coming quarterback with Miami. He got Adam Gase, <laughs> and we we've seen what happens to uh, many players. People, people getting away from Adam Gates, they just keep making money. Kenyon Drake's doing well. <laughs> Parker. Yeah, everybody's doing well when they get away. Go, Robbie. Go. <laughs> Free yourself. Freedom. <laughs> but the bigger news of this, this allowed the Titans to place the franchise tag on running back Derrick Henry. He will not be going anywhere at least for a year. He'll make a ton of money. And I look, I... How do you feel about it? Do you do you think it's that the, brilliant. do you think that the Titans should have that they still can't, right? I mean, a franchise tag doesn't stop you from negotiating a longer term deal. Do you think the Titans should open the vault up for Derrick Henry as well or let him go another year on the franchise contract and then handle it at the end of the season? No, I I, I think a franchise tag is absolutely brilliant. Look, I don't have a problem paying a ton of money to a running back that is the heart and soul and centerpiece of your offense. You want to pay uh, Todd Gurley when the Rams are going to the Super Bowl and 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 it's not working out that well right now. No, but that's a thing because they paid a long term deal. The wheels fall off on running backs. I don't like that. But you want to pay a guy a ton of money for this year? Go ahead, do it. I mean, that that's my opinion. I know everyone's don't pay running backs, but there are a few running backs that are special, that are different. Derrick Henry, clearly one of them. And the franchise tag isn't actually that much. It's $12 million or, or so. I, I believe that's uh, around what he's going to get paid for a single year. Then, if you know, if he gets injured or looks different or whatever, you move from there. I would be fine franchising him again one more year and then move on. I don't want – the where teams are crippled is when they're paying the David Johnson money when they're not getting David Johnson in return. Right. When you're paying the Todd Gurley money when all of a sudden Todd Gurley isn't that same guy because that's what happens to running backs. A one-year deal is phenomenal for the team. It does suck for Derrick Henry, though. Uh, and the follow-up move as well for the Titans, they have released Delaney Walker and running back Deion Lewis. Delaney Walker – Superstar fantasy tight end for a while. A really, really late breakout, but we wish him the best. Yeah, you got Jonu Smith now. Yes. Uh, J Jonu Smith should be a fantasy relevant option coming in. And to get back to Ryan Tannehill real quick, okay. Um, I, I think he's going to be a guy that is disparaged a lot this offseason by the fact that their numbers, the Tennessee offense was extraordinarily efficient. Their red zone efficiency was off the charts. It really was. It's it's I'm I'm not denying that it's unreplicatable. They're not going to be that efficient again. They're not. He is still going to be a great value in the draft. So when you talk about Kyler Murray, the big news that he gets from free agency and Ryan Tannehill knowing where his team is in fantasy drafts, I will happily be taking Ryan Tannehill in the 10th, 11th, 12th round because I don't think he's going to be a highly drafted guy over Kyler Murray in the 5th, even though Kyler might score a, a few more fantasy points than Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill had a touchdown percent of 7.7, .7, which is unsustainable. 
that's really, really good for Aaron Rodgers. Right. That's it's phenomenal for Ryan Tano. I do not expect him to repeat that efficiency, but he does run the ball. His baseline is high, and he's got weapons here on offense that can, you know, he A.J. Brown could take a 10-yard slant and just say, nobody could tackle me and run 40 yards for a touchdown. But along with that, his yards per attempt, 9.6, when up till this point of his career, the high was 7.7. So, I mean, there is regression coming for Ryan Tannehill. We'll see if he turns into a draft day value or not. I I don't have that. I, I don't feel like I have a beat on the pulse of where will Ryan Tannehill actually go? Will he be drafted as like, will he be drafted as a top eight no fantasy way. quarterback? No way. I'm telling you, people hate the name. They hate the history. They're not excited about a run first team and come draft day. I feel like I have my finger on the pulse. He will not be a top 10 drafted quarterback. And and that's great. On, then I get him cheaper. On to the Cowboys. They were forced to place an exclusive franchise tag on to quarterback Dak Prescott. Oh, whoops. They have uh, uh, mismanaged this situation a little bit. That's very kind. I'm trying I'm trying to be a professional over here. I mean, speaking of a team that feels a little bit like they're hamstrung from a contract they gave to their superstar running back. That Zeke didn't fall off at all. I mean, he was still a great player, but you put your team in a certain position when you're paying that much money to the running back. Dak Prescott bet on himself. He's going to come out a winner. He's going to get top money uh, or 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 they keep bungling the situation and somehow, oh my gosh, can you imagine Dak Prescott going into the season on the franchise tag? Oh, 100%. You think that can happen? I think that can very oh much happen. Gosh. And that, I mean, that would be just a continuation of what has been happening, which is bungling of the situation. Amari Cooper is a, now, because the franchise As tag of the time there, of this recording. He's completely open, unrestricted free agent. He has no... Uh, reason to go to Dallas more than Washington, more than Philly, more than anyone other than, you know, he's been with money. the Cowboys and, and other than money. money. And the Cowboys, I don't know that they can afford him. They're letting all sorts of pieces walk. Uh, Byron Jones, great cornerback. He's not going to be able to be resigned. Some of their pass rushers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I we know Dak Prescott is back. That's great. Dak was the, the number two quarterback in Dak fantasy. Dak was sensational last year. He was year. phenomenal for fantasy. You know, you could argue whether or not he was great in real life. I, I think, think he was. I think he was good. I don't think he was great. I th I think he was very, very good. And uh, the reason why I consider it such a bungling is you should have locked Dak up so that you don't have this situation where Two you... Two years ago. Where Well, I'm talking about just earlier, even in the off season. I don't know, figure it out because you traded a first-round pick for Amari Cooper two years ago. and now you can't franchise him. Yeah, if, so if he, he can walks, he can just walk. Then you took this past year's first, the 2019 first, and you lit it on fire to rent a wide receiver right. to help you not make the playoffs. Low key news from the Dallas Cowboys. If uh, you've been with the show for any amount of time, you know that I have a dull ache in my heart for Blake Jarwin. They signed him to a three year extension. Worth up to $24.25 million, 9.25 guaranteed. Why? Because he's... Why the ache? Why do you like... Why because you... he's good. I think that he is a good tight end. <laughs> I've got I've got the best water bet of all time for okay. you. Super duper early. All right. Hold on. Let me... Uh, you bring it up. I'll see if okay. I can find the button. Uh, I'm going to say you get Blake Jarwin. Okay. Uh, and I get Hayden Hurst. Ooh, Yeah. I mean, they're both losing tight ends from their team that had targets. It's just a matter of who's more talented there. I think those situations are pretty good. No, because the Hayden Hurst one is much better. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm not making the bet. But Blake Jarwin will be on the late round tight end radar. He had he had it's only that one game, but <laughs> it was a it was a big time flash. Jason Witten is gone. Amari Cooper might be gone. Randall Cobb might be gone. I mean this team could be left with Michael Gallup, guys that were on the team last year, Michael Gallup and Blake Jarwin at the pass catching uh, area. I mean, it does sound like a bet you should take. 
I think no. you talked yourself into it, Mike. No, but I'm interested in him, and he might actually be on your dynasty waiver wire. Speaking of the Falcons, they are that is that is the real point here. So as I want to highlight what you just said, he could very well be on dynasty waiver wires. Yes. And if he's not, he could very well be on your roster in Dynasty and you just forgot. You're like, oh, that, I've got Blake Jarwin. That is also true. <laughs> so go check it out. He will be fantasy look, relevant find, in deep like, Dynasty leagues. Look, finding Blake Jarwin on your bench is like when you put on – you haven't worn a coat because it's been all it's been summer. Now it's winter. Oh, it's cold. You put on a coat. Oh, I got a, I got a Twinsky in the pocket here. Mm -hmm. Just it's been sitting here waiting for me. It's ironic because maybe a five ski. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. A, oh, maybe it's a George it's a Chris Washington. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Your team, you have Blake Jarwin right yes, in our main I, dynasty. I've been I have on. Hayden Hurst, oh. <laughs> so this is perfect because I'm like, oh man, maybe some relevance will come to this late tight end. Uh, speaking of the Falcons, they're going to release Devonta Freeman, who had a few years left on his contract. Uh, did not seem like he was worth it to the team. This is a major fantasy hole to be filled. I mean, not only yes. you know we we're, we're uh, getting ahead of ourselves. So they trade. Uh, they didn't trade Austin Hooper. They let Austin Hooper go in free agency. A major part of that offense. They're cutting Devonta Freeman. A major part of that offense. So there will be targets and carries. To be picked up by someone else. I think Calvin Ridley is going to be. Yes. He's a he's such a target for me. He was before this news. Now it's going to be difficult because people are aware of the added volume. Also, I expect the Falcons to be one of the best landing spots for a running back. Like a day two running back, I would expect. In the draft. In the NFL draft, second or third round, they're going to draft somebody. Yeah. You can't go into the season with Ito Smith as the guy. I mean, to, I would like you to uh, give your thoughts on Ito Smith as the starting running back sure. for the Falcons. Um, if you want to hear me throw up, I can. Um, <laughs> I'll be with you in just a second. Let me just put my finger down my throat. Look, Ito Smith is not good. He's just flat not good. He's bad. And so, no, I feel, I feel like I, I brought the mood down a little bit. Too much. Do you remember when the Arizona Cardinals yes! traded for DeAndre Hopkins? I do. Mm. He's ours. He's not yours. He's ours. I like this music a lot. It makes me happy. Kind of reminds me of the funky news drop we had. That's true. That's true. So part of, uh, part of, some of that news related, that was a terrible phrase, but Austin Hooper so they let him test the market, and the Cleveland Browns will be the team to sign him. They're going to give him a bunch of money. What is, does this interest you at all for Austin Hooper? I mean, he was the was he like the number one fantasy wide receiver, number when, one or, or when tight he, end? I mean, when he was playing through the first whatever he was, was eight weeks of the guy. season, he was number one at that point. Came back, struggled a little bit right when he got back, but finished strong. So Austin Hooper, is he, but was he a system? tight end or is it the skills you're buying into it the the Cleveland Browns have, have also apparently signed right tackle Jack Conklin really upgrading that offensive line are you interested in Austin Hooper and at the same time what does this do to David and Joku yeah I mean this the, I mean, when I saw this gone, I was just right? like man what if it's crazy to me that David Njoku, who's so talented, and he hasn't been able to stay that healthy, but when he's been out there, he's shown that he's not hes not like one of those complete busts where you draft him, he never did anything, he's just a loser, and you've got to replace him. He's flashed, he's shown that you know he might become what you drafted him to be, and now you go out and spend a ton of money here. I know Stefanski and uh, the Vikings, they utilized in the red zone the tight end a lot. So this is, which isn't you know necessarily Hooper's specialty, but he's a he's a valuable commodity. I think he is a, an above average tight end who deserves a little bit more respect than he's received. I'm not super thrilled about him on the Cleveland Browns. I certainly don't see him repeating the numbers he did last year. I've got Matt the bet. Into. I've got the bet. Okay, Blake Jarwin. Versus David Njoku. Oh, I would take Blake Jarwin there. They just 
<laughs> that has to hurt you so bad. It does because I you lo- are the you are the Injoku Injoku truther. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you. Injoku is going to sign somewhere and be good next year. He's going to leave this team uh-huh. in a good. No, just wait. Mm-hmm. Let me just say this. I just said Blake Jarwin is is going to be better this year. So obviously, I don't think highly of Injoku this year. But right. there's no chance I'm getting rid of Injoku in a dynasty league. He's definitely going to stay on my roster for that first. I contract. held on to Jarwin for multiple years. You can hold on to Joku for a few. Let's keep up with the Browns news because they did place a second round tender onto restricted free agent Kareem Hunt. He will be back. There's not going to be a team willing to give up their second round pick plus give Hunt a new contract. We know that he I mean, he's a great running back, but he comes with a lot of baggage. If and you're going to give up your second-round pick, just use your second-round pick exactly. on a great younger running back who doesn't cost nearly as much and doesn't come with the suspension risk. So I, I, I do agree with your take. This means Kareem Hunt will be a Cleveland Brown which he was he was valuable. He was not worthless sure. there. I mean, he was, uh, you know, like more of a running P- back 15. More of a PPR situation. But, Certainly. Uh, the Chargers, they placed the franchise tag on tight end Hunter Henry, so he will be back. The Saints, as we talked about, they're putting their first-round tender on Taysom Hill for some reason. Well, nobody's going to sign him now. That's and that true. that means they keep him, and for that amount of money, it's not that bad. Yeah. So the Packers have released tight end Jimmy Graham, Sternberger, Jay Sternberger. Are you interested in I'm him cer- at all? In this, I'm certainly interested in Jay Sternberger in dynasty formats where he now has the opportunity to grow. I saw him as more of a three year prospect, so I don't expect him to explode this year. Um, but if Aaron Rodgers can play into his late thirties, Sternberger should be exciting. I don't know who is going to go out there and sign Jimmy Graham. I th- there I think, are poorly run franchises. Yeah. So it could happen. It will happen. Really? You don't think he just retires? One can hope. <laughs> it's so sad. Jimmy Graham, before his kneecap was removed from his body, Jimmy Graham was one of the best tight ends we'd ever seen, best pass catching tight ends. He was a dominant fantasy player. He was, I think he was like a first round pick. He was awesome. It was him and Gronk. And Gronk and him. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, I mean, yeah, pour one out. The uh, the Vikings have extended Kirk Cousins for two years. He was going into his final year of the deal. They didn't want to play any games. They didn't want to have a Dak Prescott situation, so they have extended him. Interesting news from Pittsburgh. Vance McDonald has restructured his contract, turning his base salary into a signing bonus. So... Now it, you he's going to be there. You believed in the Vance dance last year. It did, did not work out. I believe in Juju. It did not work out. There's obviously one giant common denominator, which is they didn't have a quarterback. Right. Now Ben Roethlisberger comes back. Is there any chance that the Vance yes. dance is back on this year? Yes. There, there is a chance that we may be doing the Vance dance. Oh, but we'll, but we'll see. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of late in tight ends as there usually is. The Chicago Bears, if you have been following the news for the Chicago Bears, one thing is very clear. They don't want Mitch Trubisky to be their only option at the quarterback position heading into next year. They have been linked to Teddy Bridgewater. They have been linked to try to trade for Nick Foles. They have been linked to try and trade for Andy Dalton. They want anyone who's available. I expect they will be linked to Jameis Winston. They will be linked to Tom Brady. They're going to be linked to everybody because they should be. Because they (laughs) should be. That's why. To finish your sentence, they know. And and this is, you know, kudos to them. Yeah. See, even Jay Grizz wants it. You can't just keep doing the same failed thing over and over because it looked like it was going to work once upon a time for a few weeks. You have to at least do. and, And really... I think this is an at least and an at most situation. I don't think they'll go with Jameis Winston and have to pay him enough where he's coming in. They want someone to come in and be a competent backup to fight and claw and compete with Trubisky because their hope is still that Trubisky 
steps up right. and becomes the guy. They don't want to – I know there were some rumors today that Teddy Bridgewater, they were in contract talks that would insinuate that he would come in as the starter. I would be so proud of the Bears if they did that, but I just don't believe for a second that's going to happen. So for fantasy context, what this means is they probably will bring in a backup, and Trubisky is risky. Risky as Trubisky. As per usual, Kansas City, they did exercise the option for Damian Williams. So where we stand right now, Damian Williams is the starting running back for Kansas City. Whether or not he makes it through the draft again, Without a high draft capital running back selected by Kansas City, that remains to be seen. Jason, let's check in with your gut. Is Damian Williams the starting running back next year for Kansas City? My gut says yes. I think he will be. I think they will draft a non-first three-round running back, bring in depth. Interesting. And have, a, you know, but... Because he's good? Because they just won a Super Bowl, and I think that Big, they're off of the back of of a snubbed Super Bowl MVP, Damian Williams, who's good. I think who performed well. <laughs> like that's what I believe. <laughs> I think he performed well, and he uh, deserves that shot. And like I've always said, if he is the starter for Kansas City, regardless of my belief in his talent, he will perform great his, for his, fantasy. Is good talent. He is good for fantasy. That is what I will say. Oh, okay. We're going with that distinction. He is absolutely. He, I'll say he's great for fantasy if he's the <laughs> starter. He's great. So you want me to say? You want me to say Damian Williams is great? Damian Williams is great for fantasy football. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to hear you say he's good. I didn't bump it up to now, great. Real quick, can we go back uh, to uh, what DeAndre mean? Hopkins? Oh for a yes, second? because it's been a little bit. Oh yeah. Hey, everybody, did you hear? We got the Andre Hopkins. Oh, we also got rid of David Johnson. It was the same move. So the reason I wanted to come back is because while we have celebrated and... I'm going to be celebrating for months. <laughs> yes, uh, while we are <laughs> celebrating, um, we should cover the fantasy implications as well of DeAndre that, Hopkins, of David Johnson. Those of are fair things. <laughs> <laughs> these guys that got lost it did but it well it got it got delayed yeah postponed yeah postponed. but yeah. it didn't get lost because here right. we are we found it so let's talk <laughs> through some of these guys deandre hopkins sure. my initial reaction was this take this is a hit this is a downgrade for him he's going from deshaun watson who has proven uh what he can do with hopkins the target market share for DeAndre Hopkins has yes. always been it's been over th it's over thirty percent. He's the league leader, or he's like top three every right. year. It's just unbelievable to the tune where years ago you said, "Well, it has to come down." Historically speaking, no, it doesn't, and no, it hasn't. Now, I'm saying it has to come down again, and maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's maybe it's no. There's a reason he gets so many targets because he's so stinking good. However, there's still Larry Fitzgerald. There's still Christian Kirk. Right. There are better options to throw the ball to in this system aside from DeAndre Hopkins, and you have more of a variable at quarterback, the unknown of Kyler Murray, that I think this is a slight downgrade at first. However, I do expect that the Arizona Cardinals as a team to have a significant increase in passing volume in total. Kyler threw the ball 542 times. As a rookie. As a rookie. And so that number will almost certainly go up. And, you know, if he's up at 600 uh, passing attempts, then maybe if the target market share drops for DeAndre Hopkins, but the total... That would be a lot if he was at 600. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be in the top 10 for sure in the league, but I, I, uh, I think that that's not... That's not out of the realm of possibility, but the point is if it raises and his market share goes down, well, if you're getting a smaller slice of a bigger pie, it can it can end up the same. I still think that you're clearly talking about a guy that will be in the top six wide receivers. Yeah, I would still be comfortable with him as top five. Yeah, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna drop him out. He he is super talented, and the one thing we can say is we've seen Hopkins with several different quarterbacks. Sure, before Deshaun good Watson, point. 
remember when Tom Savage was starting. Yeah. Over Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Good one, Bill O'Brien. Yeah, he's Bill O'Brien's got got plenty of great moves in his history. Uh but Hopkins has always done fairly well. He did have one poor down year um when the quarterback play was too bad, but Kyler is not a someone you'd put into the category of poor quarterback play. Right. So what about David Johnson? This is David Johnson goes from if he was coming into this year, he stayed on the Cardinals and and the Cardinals did resign Kenyon Drake. I would see it the same way that I saw it the second half of last season, which is Kenyon Drake's the starter and David Johnson is a break glass in case of emergency player for this roster who's basically not used. So he goes from irrelevance to giant relevance. Right? Because you had you know, you, you look at what Duke Johnson and uh Carlos Hyde did. Right. You put them together, they they were phenomenal in fantasy last year. So, you know, obviously David Johnson's not going to come in here and be out there for 100% of snaps like Christian McCaffrey and just take over, but there is a lot to like here in this system. I mean, the, they did trade DeAndre Hopkins to get David Johnson. Yeah, so the investment of saying this is it's a core. pretty large. It is. I will say this as an Arizona Cardinal fan, uh, as a fantasy analyst, as a professional in this industry that watches all the film and does all the uh, analyzing of metrics, David Johnson looked poor to me last year. As a running back, not in the passing game, still runs great routes, has great hands. Uh, if you put him on a linebacker, he's he's good enough. But when it comes to getting to the hole, hitting it with burst, getting to the edge, he seemed like he lost two steps to me. And I don't know that the change of system is the only thing that's going to matter. I'm worried. It might. I mean, he looked he he looked like he was analyzing things slowly, where he just he really didn't fit the scheme. I agree. I mean, that it ended up making it look like he was just a poor runner. His pass catching still skills are still there. Duke Johnson will still be there. Duke Johnson only had 44 receptions last year, which for a, for a pass cut catching specialist, 44 receptions at the running back position, that's fine. But I would have just off of the, the, the top of the head, I would still feel comfortable with David Johnson as a top 15 guy. He's going to get the volume, like you said, the investment. And the investment into acquiring him equals opportunity. So he's going to be on the field. Deshaun Watson is great. The Houston Texans are going to score a lot of points. So I still believe that David Johnson will have fantasy relevance. The three downs, though, even if David Johnson's playing on three downs, Duke Johnson, 44 reception, that's not that's not the area uh, that David Johnson would need to propel himself back into being uh, a top 10 running back. Well, that being said, we have seen that vacated targets historically, when, the, when a team has a bunch of vacated targets, it usually benefits – Passing to the running back sure. more than any other position. Obviously, DeAndre Hopkins leaving vacates a whole lot of targets. So I I could definitely see them utilizing uh, Deshaun Watson, utilizing David Johnson in the passing game more than he's ever utilized a running back. I just worry he's going to be risky for me because he's probably going to be around 10 to 14 as far as running back placement in the draft. And he's got some red flags that say if he, there's another guy that I like about the same in his tier, I'm probably going the other way. He feels like one of those fourth round running backs where every year you in your draft, you get into the fourth round, you're looking at the running backs going, uh, uh, fourth round sounds uh, pretty pretty okay to me. Like I'd be fine. But I'm saying, but the, the fourth. but the running backs who end up in the fourth round, it is just it's a nebulous shapeless pit yeah i i think he'll end up higher but hopefully hopefully you're right so that i can maybe try to have david johnson on a couple rosters see if he can fill that old arian foster role that andy loved so much and sure. so did every fantasy owner of arian foster because he's phenomenal all right jason let's we'll get into the cba just uh quickly okay how's, how's that sound? sounds good we don't have a lot of time left but we want to at least one touch on it News and notes from around the league. As we said, the CBA has been extended. 
barely. It's like fifty one and a half percent. It like made it sixty votes. It made it, but it made it. it That's all that matters. It made it. Also, and before we start talking about this, the NFL draft is scheduled to go on April twenty third through the twenty fifth. All the public events are canceled due to our health situation, but the NFL draft is going to, at least at this point, still happen on schedule. Oh, I I don't think there's a point it will it will change because they're removing the. Are they going to zoom people in? They, like they're they just going to video conference. The the official word is that they are still working on the format of the show. It 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 is to be still broadcast. So the event will happen, but the people won't be there. Sure. All right, on to the CBA. Here are the big things for football. Playoff expansion. That happens. Now, this is a hot topic. Like, yes. People are heated one way or the other and I'm on, heated. on Twitter. I'm heated on Excellent. It. I have my opinions. I am super pro this move. I am too. Fantastic. High yeah. five. Let's, let's clinky. <laughs> because, and like people are like, well, the NFL system, it's, it's perfect. I don't want to. I don't want to change anything. It was perfect. But you know what? I get another playoff game? So here's Selfishly, the thing. I love it. I understand that the number two team, it takes away their bye. So you don't, I don't care about that. I love that it takes away You know away what I buy. say to that? Get first. Yes. <laughs> here's the deal. This is not... People are, people are overreacting me and like, no, it was perfect. Now we're going to... The NBA is terrible. The NBA, everybody makes playoffs. That's how it feels, unless you're a Suns fan, and you never make the playoffs because right. you're at yeah, the bottom. Yeah, of course. But otherwise, you know, it, I remember when I was a giant NBA fan, it just felt like, man, it was too watered down. This is not that watered down. This is one more team makes it in, and one more team loses the bye. What that says is that late season competition, and specifically for fantasy football, it's going to matter more. We're going to you seven, can't rest your players anymore. No, it's going to be much more difficult to rest your players. Now, it's not impossible. Obviously, this last year, the the uh, the Ravens locked up the number one seed a little early, so that situation was locked in. That wouldn't have changed. But the two seed means so much more. You know, the the difference between a one and two, and also that means it's not just that one more team makes it in. That means through the course of the season, several weeks out, there are five, six, seven more teams that are still in the running for that last spot. Right. So it's good for that. It's good for um, uh, fantasy players being involved, and it's good for the other big deal in this uh, new CBA, which is the 17-game season. People are worried for from a fantasy perspective of, how much longer are players going to be sat when things are locked up? Do we extend it a week in the beginning for fantasy? Do we keep week 16 championship or week 17 championships? Well, these new playoff rules are going to make it to where people are playing all the way through till the end, which I think is smart. What we would say is that if you are in a, if you are currently in a week 17 championship uh, league where you play the final week, you should wait. You really? should see how it goes and not extend. You keep it that week 17. But it's not a 17-game season this year. I know. Oh. I'm tricking the week 17ers oh. into playing their championship <laughs> one week early, Mike. Get on my level. I mean, what a great idea, Jason. Yes. But but for week 16 championships, you know, the majority of leagues, the best leagues out there, you will want to move to a week 17 championship. But... Well, we think week 17 because we don't know if there's going to be another bye week. Or, sure, sure. Like the yes, details are not fair. worked out. Um, and the most important thing to know, because I've, I've been fielding these questions already, like what do we do about this upcoming season? Nothing, because this is not for this upcoming season. Right. 2020 will be 16 games. It'll be the same NFL that you're used to. In fact, 2021 is not a lock to be the first year that they move to 17 games because of all the things they're figuring out. I think some people in the, the internal circles of the NFL expect that the 17-week season will start first in 2022. Here's what I know about the, the extra game. The owners are going to make a lot more money. Here's my prediction. It will happen in 2021 <laughs> because the Fat Cats will figure out how to make it happen by then. They want that money. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and we won't get into all the stuff of, of 
the what does it do for the players? I mean, base the, the basic thing is lower level guys they're gonna make a good bit more money. So th this is why it passed. The elite tier players they didn't like it, but it's far more common to have players who have minimum salary contracts and they're going to make a lot more. I would money. say the only other real relevant thing here is the drug testing policy where, uh, you know, if they, if they are, uh, found to test positive for marijuana, which now a positive test is much, much, much higher. Right. They uh, raise the threshold. Yeah. Uh, it, it does not come with suspension. So Josh Gordon is pissed. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, Man, this guy's lost his career to yeah. to you know the the marijuana yeah. drug test, which now is like ah, you're good. But <sighs> we move forward, and by moving forward, I think you mean oh, one yes. more for the road. It's party time! <laughs> yeah. oh. Thank you for tuning in, Foot Clan. I wonder how it's been a good day amid a weird time. Stay, it sounds really weird for me to start saying stay safe while the party music plays. <laughs> stay safe! Hey, follow the rules and the regulations that are being placed out because we all have to work together to make this thing work. Okay, I can't do this with the party. <laughs> can't do it with the party music. But there's a part of that music that reminds me of Ghostbusters. I don't know what it is. You are correct. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, I, so you hear But it. But instead we can say like, Go Hopkins! Yeah. Thank you for tuning in, Foot Clan. I hope we could bring you at least this hour of relief in the crazy time. We will be here with our regularly scheduled programming. Fear not. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Foot Clan Simply Safe is everything you need in a home security system. You'll have an army of highly trained security experts ready to dispatch police to your home at a moment's notice 24-7. And you can set the system up yourself. Check it out today at simplisafe.com slash footballers. Get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial at simplysafe.com slash footballers.